Hey everybody, McRodge here. Happy Friday. Um, I'm in the RV right now. Um, I just wanted to show you guys that I do in fact have an RV. I've mentioned it a few times in a couple other videos. Um, so my wife and I lived in this for about two years. By choice, of course. We were on the move most of that time. We um, are eventually going to hit the road again. When, I don't know. I think we're probably going to wait for the economy to settle down, maybe World War III to happen and pass, although that could be quite a while. But we have this sitting in our driveway right now. Um, we use this as an office. Um, there's also another desk here. This pops out. And because I generally require less room, uh, just writing, and um, well now, you know, maybe uh, editing YouTube videos. Um, I would take the smaller desk. Uh, it gets a little crowded at the dinette when both of us are there. And, of course, and then, uh, yeah, when we traveled, this spot right here was where the dog crate would go. And when we traveled, the dogs would go in the crate, and that was their little safe spot. And then uh, there's our TV bracket. I had a 32-inch TV that weighed only 10 pounds, and I would put my legs up here. And this was like my, my little rec recliner area. Very comfy, actually. And then Sonia had the whole couch to herself, and the mutts would usually join her, actually, or they'd hang out on the floor down here. And yes, it's an RV with carpet, which is kind of weird because you're you're hiking, you're doing outdoor stuff a lot, dragging mud in here constantly with two people and two pets. It's pert near impossible to keep it clean. Um, and uh, the RV needs quite a bit of love before we can uh, use it full-time again. We are thinking of taking her out uh, on little regional, uh, you know, long, long weekend type adventures. Uh, every time we've tried to do it since we've lived here, like the past four years, we, um, I don't know, something comes up or we just get psyched out for one reason or another and we wind up not taking it out. <laughs> but, um, you know, we love having it here, uh, having just the extra space. Um, everything still functions except, well, we're having some electrical issues. We can't draw too many amps. Um, we can only draw like five or 10 amps instead of the, the 30 that it's supposed to run. So we need to uh, get an electrician to replace the whole electrical box at some point. Um, and this whole side of it is a slide out. Everything you see from uh, this, the end of this window all the way back to the end of the dinette is a slide. It goes about three feet in that direction, which makes this place enormous. It goes from feeling like a large vehicle to feeling like a studio apartment. So at some point I'm going to give you guys a full tour. Um, I guess I just wanted to kind of throw it out there. You know, it would have made sense to start a YouTube channel while we were traveling. We saw something like 35 states. Um, we have one of those little maps on the side of the RV, which I'll, which I'll show you guys. Uh, just the states that we camped in in this vehicle, about 35 states. Uh, we went from New Jersey all the way down to Florida, uh, right along the coast, and then we went back up through the middle of all those states, um, up through Pennsylvania, we saw the Poconos, and then back to northwestern New Jersey, and then back to where we were living at the time. And then the next leg of our journey took us west. We went through um, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Iowa, and to South Dakota, where we got our residence, our residency at South Dakota, um, full-time nomad. Uh, South Dakota is very friendly to nomads. Uh, we are, of course, living here as non-nomads now, but um, that's why we originally became South Dakota residents. Um, you can get a personal mailbox and basically never come back to the state, although I think it's a great state and there's lots to explore here in an RV or just just traveling in uh, by car. Um, then we went south all the way down to Texas through uh, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, then west again, uh, New Mexico, Arizona, California, visited the wife's parents, the in-laws that live in Los Angeles. Then we headed through Nevada, Utah, Idaho, Oregon, Washington, back through the tip of Idaho near Coeur d'Alene into Montana, 
and we saw Yellowstone. We saw a bunch of national parks and national monuments. We saw um, Devil's Tower in Wyoming. We saw Mount Rushmore. We saw Badlands National Park, which is one of the most underrated national parks right here in South Dakota. Um, then we went down to Colorado, saw the Denver area, Boulder, Rocky Mountain National Park. Then we headed back east all through the, the length of Nebraska, uh, Lincoln, Omaha, then back up to Sioux Falls. And then we wound up purchasing uh, the, this, um, where, we, where we've been for these past four years. And um, anyway, RVing is awesome. I highly recommend trying to do full-time RVing at some point if you can, or at least, you know, I, I just feel like it really limits it when you have to keep going back to a spot, one single spot, you know, your, your home. Uh, it's much easier if you live in the central part of the country, like either the mountain area or the Great Plains area. Uh, if you're on the East Coast or the West Coast, it's much more difficult to see those places that are farthest away, right? Um, but either way, you know, it's very limiting. If you can just stay in the RV and not have to go back anywhere, uh, you can really maximize your your travel time and um, you know you're always heading to another destination rather than backtracking so um, anyway I'm not sure what possessed me to do this today it's just a really nice temperature my wife has some <laughs> uh, autumn leaves there decorations for fall time and um, we have some up here too we would decorate it pretty nice when we lived here um, a lot of my detractors were like, oh, McRodge is living in an RV. Well, yeah, and we were traveling. The way you know people are doing it by choice is if they're constantly on the move. A vehicle that gets eight miles per gallon <laughs> uh, isn't cheap. You know, those, a lot of these campgrounds aren't cheap. But yeah, the people who are living in an RV not by choice tend to park it in one spot, or at least they stay in the same relative neighborhood and they only move it if they have to, because the gas for these things is expensive. Um, but it's a great way to see the country, and uh, we're hoping to see Canada. But um, yeah, we were on the move constantly. Uh, not always paying for a campground spot. Lots of free stuff. Cracker Barrel is free. A lot of Lowe's and Home Depot's will let you stay for free. Sometimes Target will let you stay for free. Walmart, at least back when we were doing this, circa 2018, 2019, uh, most Walmarts, I would say, would allow you 24 hours, and, and a few allowed you even longer than that. Um, but, yeah, like, um, you know, and nothing against it. I think this is a great option if you are priced out of an apartment and a house. An RV is not a bad way to go. Um, honestly, it's, uh, I'm sure there's a stigma about it if you're living in it. An RV is better than a car and a car is better than a tent, and a tent is better than nothing. So, you know, you're really not uh, homeless if you're living in an RV. You're just houseless, right? Um, but anyway, yeah, if you got a friend who's full-time RVing uh, and traveling the country, they're probably not doing it because they've been forced into it. They're traveling because they feel like traveling, and they're able to. And I think most people want to do that. It's just most people aren't able to do it because they're tethered to a particular place for one reason or another. Most most generally a job is keeping people in one spot, which is fine. Both uh, my wife and I have worked remotely for a long time now. So, you know, we we did it all over. We had a, a Wi-Fi hotspot that we took with us and there, um, yeah, we saw a huge chunk of the country. We're gonna see the rest of it, hopefully in the not too distant future. Um, honestly, it came out to roughly the same as what we were paying um, in rent and then it would have been equivalent to our mortgage uh, we even though we we bought our properties with cash we did calculate what a mortgage would be and um, the monthly payment was I mean traveling was actually slightly less just slightly less when you factored in the gas the propane the campgrounds and here's how we traveled we traveled uh, we when we were making miles as they say we would just pull into a Walmart um, you know, probably around 5 p.m. We'd spend the night. We'd definitely purchase stuff from there. Uh, we'd eat the food from there. And then we'd be on our merry way very early in the morning before the parking lot got full. Like 7 a.m., 8 a.m., sometimes even earlier than that if we were near a big city because we wanted to avoid the traffic because driving this 
behemoth. It's like 30 feet long. It's more like 32 feet long once you factored on. I had a bike rack in the back, um, bikes hanging off of our ladder. Um, and then we, once we'd reach our destination, which was usually just outside of a major city or a small city in, in many cases, uh, we would um, we would get a campground. Like they usually had weekly rates, so we would get the weekly rate, so it would save us a little bit of money. We also did uh, what's called Passport America, where a lot of participating campgrounds would give you buy one, get one type deals. Uh, and that would often, some of them even did it indefinitely. Others only did it for one night, some did it for two, some did it for a week. You know, it just depends on the campground. And then we also did Harvest Hosts, where you get to stay at vineyards and breweries and various non alcoholic type places like. Um, craft barns, flea markets, museums, they'll let you stay either in their parking lot or if they have a lot out back, they'll let you stay there. It's usually very safe and you get to see these amazing things and sometimes you meet other RVers that are doing the same thing. Um, really, um, yeah, <laughs> we, we got to get back on the road again, but there's a few things that, that need to be fixed up. This is our um, it's a Fleetwood Tioga. We, <laughs> both the person who sold it to us and the person at the DMV, um, and the person at the storage uh, place where we originally stored it in New Jersey, uh, called it um, Tiago, right? They misread it. So we just figured it was meant to be that the name of this RV was Tiago the Tioga. So anyway, um, maybe I'll slip in some some pics or videos that I took on put up on Instagram so you guys can see uh, a few highlights of our travels. But um, for now, I guess I just want to say, um, I don't know, what am I trying to say? I guess it's, um, it's good to have a goal in life. Um, I don't have any children, uh, which, you know, nothing wrong with having kids. It just wasn't in the cards for me and my wife. Um, can talk about that more later. Um, but you know, our dogs have functioned as children in many ways, and I know they're not actual children. I'm not actually saying anyone should do that, should get dogs instead of have actual kids. I'm just saying that's what worked out for us. And, um, you know, for us, the thing that we're looking forward to is getting back on the road. And that's, that's one of many things we're just, you know, saving up for a smaller RV, actually. Uh, this was very stressful to drive. Uh, we had a car with us. My wife would drive the car and I would drive this and she would just follow me. Um, it's just very hard to park it anywhere. Um, it's difficult backing it up. It's difficult, um, you know, dealing with traffic on the freeway. It really, this thing tops out 65, 70 miles an hour. So in places like around here where the speed limit is 80 miles an hour, you know, people are going 85, 90, um, or just zipping past you constantly. Um, something smaller. We really don't need all that much space. And um, anyway, not sure what we're going to do with this puppy. Um, we like it a lot. It's it served our needs for sure. Um, see the dinette, the couch, my little area was here with the... Uh, desk kitchen stove fridge we don't have it turned on right now uh, nothing is is actually turned on um, I mean the propane still works we could turn the stove on um, bathroom door here and then big closet area. This was my closet. And then the wifey. This is, this is one of the coolest parts of this RV is it, it's basically a full bathroom. This was actually larger than the bathroom in our house in New Jersey. Um, got a full step in shower, little skylight up there, RV toilet, and this was my wife's closet. She had an enormous amount of space for all of her stuff. Lots of drawers down there. And 
ceiling fan. That's where the AC came out of those little receptacles. Bathroom sink. Anyway, it's a really neat rig. Um, I feel bad that we're, we're not doing much with it right now, but I hope you guys hang out on this channel. Um, I think the, the through story of, of the McRaj channel is going to be us either fixing Tiago the Tioga back up and getting her back on the road full time, or it's going to be us saving up and purchasing uh, like a class B, like a really nice high end camper van and getting back on the road full time. Uh, when, when that happens, I don't know. And, and we're going to hopefully do it part time before we, uh, we go for the, the full time deal again. This, this is where our microwave was. We're actually using the microwave from the RV as our main microwave in the house. Because <laughs> it's a good microwave. It's a little big, a little clunky. Probably won't put it back in here just because it's so much weight. If we do want a microwave, we'll get a smaller one. Or maybe we'll just bring along the air fryer with us. Mm. Anyway, just wanted to uh, show you guys the RV parked in the driveway. We'll give you a much more thorough tour later on. And until next time, adios, muchachos.